Okay, bring myself up. Morning, everybody. Afternoon. Afternoon. How you doing, Carl? Good. Amazing. Off offline, we were just talking about haircuts. Hair. Uh, luckily, <laughs> luckily, before this all happened, I had a really short cut, um, which just I don't normally do that. So it's just a bit of luck. Uh, otherwise, not. mine would be looking like yours as well. Yeah. God, I mean, I'm lucky to have hair, I guess, but yeah, yeah, it yeah, depends. <laughs> depends on what look you I was want. Compl I was complaining about this the other day to a friend who is balding, and he's like, well, <laughs> "Shut up, <laughs> shut up." Yeah, yeah. Are, are you are you being for real? Uh, yeah, but I mean, the, the reality is, you know, for it's it's these little things which are which are just we just either take for granted in normal life, or now it's like, oh my god, I can't even get a haircut. Something that's yeah, off that. That simple act, uh, knowing how many barbers and hairdressers and across the UK, I imagine there's loads in Brixton. Yeah, yeah, lots. Yeah, yeah, lots. Of, um, lots so of. I'm gonna, I'm either gonna learn to do it myself or get my girlfriend to do it. And the thing is, yeah, if she learns to do it or if I learn to do it myself, I'm never going for a haircut again. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that for me because I don't, I, 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 I don't know anything about football. And always, 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 my hairdresser is trying to talk to me about football, and I'm like, "Yep, that Arsenal, yeah. yep." Ooh. Yeah, it's like you know, I don't care about football. Um, I, just, I just can't. I just can't. Well, I go to a Vietnamese dude now because I lived in Vietnam for a couple of years. We yeah. talk about Vietnam, so I can talk about food and stuff like that, and that's yeah, a lot yeah, easier. Yeah. But, but yeah, if I don't have to go and sit and make small talk for half an hour, if I can do it myself, then that's it. Like, I'm not going back to the hairdresser. So. Absolutely. And talking about how many other people would be like that. Because I was on Amazon last night trying to buy some clippers. So I was Nothing. Say, it's all sold out. It's all, all sold out. out. So talk about online business uh, and having that in place in advance. Uh, of course, you can't predict what products are going to be hot off the press. You can get a guesstimation. But uh, clippers, who would have thought, right? Because because uh, I know people who go for a haircut every single week. You know, they'll go <laughs> one, yeah, once a week just to make sure the hair is exactly as they would like it no growth whatsoever so uh and and that's you know it's common you know if, if your haircut costs you eight to twelve quid then yeah i mean it, it, i guess it makes sense if you've got that sort of t time on your hands um uh, awesome so right refocusing on today mm. um so today's tuesday yep. i have to look at the calendar i don't know what day it is now so today's tuesday welcome to episode number six and if you joined us yesterday, you'll know that this week we're talking about a technique um, which is really focused on giving you guys the tools in order to be able to generate an online income as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. That's the key. So what Kyle did is he researched and put together a big list, which is actually growing. It's getting bigger of, and bigger. It's I'll getting bigger and bigger. Quickly. And it's, it's, uh, it's now 200 plus items or just under. Uh, 200, I think, on last count. Let me check. 15. So that list there may look blurry to you, but that list... 200, yeah. The, the, the link for that list is available available in the description below, so do check that out. And that's got essentially 200 different ways, um, which are categorized in different ways in terms of ease, in terms of time, in terms of skill set required. But essentially, some of those there, which we're going to talk about today, can actually generate you an income very, very quickly um, without any skill set required. Um, so, Carl, what's your thoughts on today? Because we're, today's focus is uh, the tools that we want to talk about today are general and yeah. essentially they're not, you don't need a specific skill. They're not specifically uh, skill orientated. Later in the week, we're going to focus on language, professional skills, and creative skills. But today is assuming that, look, you don't necessarily want to invest time in those skills, a learning curve, etc. or you may not have a uh, a skill set within a specific niche, and that's okay. So today we're starting off general. Um, that's the focus. Um, but just just frame today um, and maybe give us some ideas on uh, maybe a disclaimer as well. I think that might be important. Sure. So as Hans was just saying, these are methods that do not require any particular skills. Um, they're mainly just requiring your time um and existing resources that you already have so uh, we're going to go through about six or four or five different categories of different things you can do oh four i think it is um some of these or a lot of these will not make large amounts of cash um, and i'm saying this up front that's because they don't require any particular skills um anybody can jump in and do them 
and as a result of that there's a lot of supply and there's a lot of supply for the demand that these companies have so the cost per task or the cost per piece of work you do is actually going to be quite low that said they can be done in such a volume that it's possible to piece together a few hundred pounds a month um, i've seen some people who are saying they're making a thousand pound a month doing these things don't know if that's possible and we're mm -hmm. going to look at all, all the different options um but it is possible without any skills just using a computer and your internet connection to start doing a lot of these things today to start getting a bit of pocket money a bit of extra cash coming in the door um whether or not these particular methods are going to be worth it for you depends really it depends on your personal situation it depends on your uh expenditure how much you're spending um so 300 pound a month or 400 pounds a month extra for some people might not be worth the time but for other people it could be life-changing it could be um, enough to you know look after their family comfortably during this time um, also because we're not necessarily only talking to people in the uk um, these amounts of money can be earned globally so maybe if you're in the uk this isn't much money but if you are in another part of the world that's a, a substantial amount of cash today is going to be mainly these um no uh, specific skill required um easy to do from home and relatively low pay over the week we are going to be talking about things that um, can generate more cash but they require you to have certain skills yes yeah, so i'll just jump in there carl because yeah. that's a that's a great point which is i think treat today as in because these are not mine and kyle's favorite tactics techniques because what they are is they do allow you to generate an income of a tiny amount tiny to medium um or tiny to low rather depending on your personal situations if you are in the philippines right now and you're getting paid this amount of money that could be quite a lot for example it's cool. just compared to the minimum wage in a country like the uk this is mm. correct so so the the thing i was going to add um, which carl you've already mentioned is mm. there's no judgment on that level of income because we're all in a different situation, but if you could implement one of these strategies and it was able to cover your Wi-Fi bill for the, for the month, if it was able to cover, you know, your Netflix subscription, if it was able to cover some kind of bill that you have that comes out on a weekly basis, it could cover your takeaway on a Friday night. And so this is no judgment. For example, I know people who trade um, the market and their goal is, you know, just to make a thousand five hundred to two thousand pound a month, so that all of their expenses for that month are just nailed. They're categorised. If they want to go out and treat the family to a dinner on a Friday night, whether it's at the local pizza uh, place or whatever, they're saying, right, okay, I need to get, I need to make sixty to eighty pound on my trades today. Mm -hmm. So the assumption is that everything online business and we spoke about this yesterday has the reason it's got a bad rep is because everything must generate loads of cash um and unless it generates loads of cash it's a complete failure which is absolute nonsense this is typical this is really very much bringing your the today's focus is very much to bring awareness on all of the kind of things that are out there because some of these things that you've uh, collated carl i had no ex idea that existed because it That's requires really a level cool. of some yeah. really cool ones so think of it as like get, bringing an awareness uh, as, uh, to the surface of all of these things that are available out there that we may not have been aware of beforehand but also allows you to get your creative juices flowing because you may say oh i like that and i can do that i like that and i can do that and i like that and i can do that and if i do those three things that may mean 100 to 200 uh, us dollars or a pound or where, whatever your currency is around the world so i think think about it like uh in that kind of context and of course the income will build as we go throughout the week but the reason for that is you need a skill set attached to that whether it's pro uh, professional whether it's creative um so you need a skill set attached to that yeah because it's just like any other um, business task you need to be providing value um so when the task doesn't require any particular skill set and mm. can be done by anyone um it will be done by a lot of people and that devalues the uh, worth of that task whereas the late things we'll be talking about later in the week like business consultation or logo design or article writing for example these require certain skills and therefore you get rewarded higher for them um, so the things today will be much lower um, in terms of rewards that said if you're already watching this and you're thinking well i don't need to make an extra 
you know, ten dollars a day or whatever. That's that doesn't mean anything for me. We will be looking at some things which are entirely automatic. Um, like one of the things that you may be mention, mentioning harms when you say, oh, I saw some cool ones in there. You can do things like rent out your bandwidth. So when you're not using your I internet, know, that's cool. night, you get paid for it. Um, so you're being paid for your bandwidth and you can make 30 to $50 a month just doing that. So that covers the cost of your internet, for example. So we'll get to those later. Um, yeah. but even if you're thinking, well, uh, well, I don't need to make an extra $30 a month or whatever we'll talk about things that are entirely passive. Um, they just require you to sign up and then you collect some money from PayPal each and every month and that can cover expenditures. So we, we will get stuff that's going to be useful regardless of your income level. Mm, yeah. And the, the real crux of it is if, if, you know, 10, $20 is not applicable for you, then just listen to the show or log off the show and come join us tomorrow. Come join us the following day because or, that's or go where and tell we're... somebody who it will be relevant to. It, it, yes, absolutely. Just say, look, these guys are chatting about uh, generating income and it may be really useful for you in your current situation and scenario. I think yeah. I absolutely agree. So some uh, important disclaimers, uh, I'll kick it off, which is the list that we have compiled is uh, we're not endorsing any of this. Um, you know, what we've done is we tried our best to filter out the, the I mean, without be, with being polite, the rubbish. Um, and like with anything, my notes say something about a lot ruder. You're, yeah, which is why I saw your notes. I was like, okay, let me just try to, uh, what's more gentle than crap? Oh, okay, rubbish. So that you, you've, crap. you've set me up for Carl's just, we've done our best to filter out the complete crap. Okay, that, let's just keep it uh, clear as that, clear as day. So, and like with anything, anything you're going to subscribe to, sign up to, um, anything you're going to maybe generate an income from, do your own due diligence, apply some common sense. Um, does it align with your values? Does it align with uh, how you would like to make money? So all of these things are important, but that's on you. Um, so what this is really to do is, yes, we have filtered out the crap, but this is an intention of surveying and bringing to your awareness of all the amazing things that are out there that you just may not have been aware of, like renting out your bandwidth. Uh, who would have thought, you know, you spend a lot of time using a percentage of your bandwidth, actually, most of us in the UK do. Uh, those on 100 megabyte connections with fiber, you lucky people, you're not using that no way especially when you're sleeping like that it's an unused resource that you are paying for you're paying bt or version for that but you're not using it while you're sleeping generally yeah so, so renting out is a no-brainer yeah so what else have you done in in uh, creating this list and filtering out the things that we're going to speak about today what else have i done yeah um so i i, I have removed some of the things that are just obviously not worth touching um what I would say is if there's anything that strikes you as interesting over the next few days, go and look it up, go and look at their website, um, go to Google, and this is how you technically do it. You type the name of the company plus reviews or the name of the company plus is it worth it or something like that, just to find out what other people are saying about it. Um, and that's a very good way to uh, see if something is legit, see if something actually pays out a decent amount of cash uh, for the time. I've done a bunch of this over the last few days, but because it's the list is 200 now and it's going to keep growing you just need to do a bit of checking um, mm. so mm. that's all and, and with reviews just as you before you continue with reviews um uh, the best way i found to just identify if, if a review is legit or the best way for it to seem rational to me is avoid the five stars avoid the one and two stars um these are two extreme of uh, somebody's opinion one is somebody's extremely unhappy and people do get extremely unhappy and they voice their concern or someone just voicing their opinion you've got the other extreme which is uh this is the best thing i've ever done five star and it's like okay that's it great but it doesn't yeah it might be a fake but also it doesn't tell me much so yep. the three and four stars are a nice place to understand because those people have spent some time reviewing um and they give you a rational opinion and when you look at that you say actually the thing that they're not happy about then they're, they're not happy i'm not actually fussed by that you know that doesn't bother me in, in the slightest so i'm good uh, and thank you for this person reviewing something rationally rather than uh two extreme ends um and that's that's the thing to to just just bear in mind when looking at the reviews okay so back to you carl um yep so also in the big list which again you can follow the link down below to go and find mm -hmm. that um i've tried to include I've tried to include roughly how much money you can make from it. 
really hard to compare them because it's you're comparing apples to oranges some things take you a minute to do and you get paid a dollar some things you might have several hours spread over several weeks or, or maybe even your bandwidth over a month or whatever um so it's very hard to nail everything down to a per hour or a per minute um income but i've tried my best so basically there's like uh one dollar sign for doesn't pay very much two dollar signs for it's fine and three four you can actually make some good money with that so i've got that um and i've also marked if they are trivial so they're things you can do automatically like renting your bandwidth for example uh, whether they're easy medium or hard um, again depends on your skill level you're going to be better at certain things than other people but in general writing an ebook for example is going to take a lot more time hmm. uh, than filling out a survey and because of that, writing an ebook is going to have a higher reward than filling out a survey um, so i've yeah. tried to get this into the list um we are going to be opening up the list for kind of user submissions and comments and stuff like that um so hopefully we can use that um, and crowdsource information to refine it a bit because nobody's actually put together a big list like this or when they have it's mainly because they're trying to push a particular service um mm, which yeah. we're not really doing um so yeah. i hope this would be a useful resource moving forward uh, fantastic. And things that you, you have cut out and I've seen uh, you've cut out is things are excluded, such as yeah. uh, potentially dangerous things like uh, online poker, match betting, domain flipping. Um, yeah. And this is, again, just to keep the whole user base safe, because some of these things can have an addictive pull. Yeah, um, matched betting is a big one in the UK in particular. There's a tax yeah. hole, which means you can i don't know the details of it but basically you can get free bets um with the bookkeepers but they require yeah. you to sign up for an account with william hill or who they call uh, I, I don't or, there's quite a few of them there's, there's loads of them now you yeah. sign up with the um uh the bookies the betting agency yeah. you get a free bet if you win fantastic you get some free money that's kind of how they're selling it um if you don't win you haven't really lost anything the the problem here is that you have now been not tricked but you've been now incentivized into setting up a betting account so for some people that they might win and they're like i'm good at this i'm great at this and then they they put all that money in and then maybe they lose it and then suddenly we're we're into that gambling cycle um yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah so off. That. i've left it off yeah. for some people absolutely i'm sure it'll work there's lots of guides about match betting online it seems to be there seems to be a technique that people use I've left off because there are some people who are going to be susceptible to um, the gambling loop. And as soon as they're on that site, and as soon as they're logged in on the app and they're watching, you know, mm. things fluctuating, they're like, oh, yeah, I can make a bet on this. And we just want to keep it. 100%. Yeah. So, so um, I, th I think what I love about this list is um, anything that requires upfront cash mm. or anything that requires um, that kind of, uh, you know, dangerous yeah. or uh, psychological thing that's all taken off the table so yeah. working um, work from home opportunities but you need to order your supplies up ahead of time for a hundred dollars and as yeah. soon as you see something like that it's like yeah, yeah. Like, generally <laughs> generally if something smells it stinks like there's going to be a reason for it or mm. if it's too good to be true if somebody's saying oh you're going to make uh, two thousand dollars from home in you know an hour exercise caution um yeah a episode one told you that there's no in online business digital marketing there's no uh, silver bullet there's no magic pill that you can take same, um, as, business. same as business if it was uh, it, ultimately everything requires time effort skill so we're not saying these things don't work um but we're saying that just approach them with again common sense due diligence uh, and then make a decision for yourself is that the kind of business that you would like to start how quickly will you actually see revenue and just ask yourself these these questions so i guess that's the disclaimer um and is there anything else we, we want to talk about here no that's the disclaimer and the methodology with which we've put the list together um yes yes yeah. we, we want to offer you all the options to show you all the different things you can do but if there's something that is just obviously crappy um mm. then, or, or or there's or if there's a nugget of uh, value in there but it's surrounded by a lot of um predatory companies or a lot of uh, predatory practices and we've just left it off um so yes yeah. it's a disclaimer but it's also us genuinely putting together a list and saying uh, we're only going to give you the stuff that's valuable but still do your due diligence yeah, absolutely. And if you are 
think if you're looking at and you've sort of after today you've handpicked maybe three or four and you're not sure which one to start with or like there's something on the page and you're like what does that mean Mm -hmm. chat to my, myself and Kyle in the Slack group. So that link is in the comments as well. And just ask us and a screenshot in the Slack group and say, look, I pull this from the list. What do you think about this thing? What, what do they mean by this? Because sometimes it could be a technical term. It could be a kind of industry that me and Kyle are familiar with. And we can just say, okay, rationally, or try to give you a pros and cons uh, in a, so trying to be unpartial as well and unbiased because, uh, you know, there's, these are companies, they make revenue and most of them are legit. But there's, I don't know the actual statistic, but I'm sure the online world is filled with uh, scams and lots of different um, unscrupulous things. So just ask us and get our opinion on it. And we can say, actually, yeah, yeah, that was, we, we like that because of this. But just be cautious that it, it may say that you're going to get paid on day one, but actually look at this. They pay you in vouchers. So this is one of the warnings, right? Uh, you can either get paid in cash, you can get paid in credits, in vouchers. Um, you know, the only way to benefit is if you refer X amount of people and then the, the reward for you is in vouchers. But for you, you may say, actually, I don't want vouchers right now. I need hard cash that yeah. drops into my bank account. If that's the case, then we can say, actually, they pay you in vouchers. Maybe that's not the right one for you. But yeah. it, it might be right for somebody else who needs clothes vouchers or, I don't know, whatever vouchers they give away, uh, e-credits e or whatever, whatever is applicable that you can spend in a certain place. Mm. Okay, so I think we can jump in and start talking about different ways to make uh, cash quickly online. Yeah, I agree. So the, so the way we can do this is categories, and then within those categories will be a, a bunch of stuff, and there's even more on the list. So we just pull a, pull a few items out. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, so we're it's a survey today, so we'll go quite quickly from now on. Yeah. So don't, don't think, don't panic and say, are they going to go through all two hundred items on the list? No, that's that's your homework. <laughs> We're just going to pull a few items, just so you're aware of different categories and what's again get those creative juices flowing. Yeah. Okay. So the first one is not really a business, but it's about generating cash quickly. Um, whether you need a cash injection to uh, feed your household, which is fair at the moment, or and this is more interesting. Um, maybe you are thinking about setting up a business. Maybe you are you want to get a website built, or you uh, want to put together an e-commerce shop, or whatever it is, and you need some cash to get that done quickly. Chances are, there's a lot of stuff in your house which is worth that amount of money, um, and you can basically sell things online in order to release that cash, invest it mm. into a project. So whatever you're using the cash for, um, there's a few different platforms we can use. So this isn't really a business. This is just about um, looking around your house and you'll probably be quite surprised. There's a lot of stuff there which um, is worth money and you're not using it. So. I agree. So, so, uh, so think of this like, um, uh, what's that famous person who uh, is is currently like super famous? There's a couple of people, but one in particular is famous for uh, minimalizing and clearing out houses. Marie Kondo. Maria Kondo, and there's there's somebody who super, became super famous on Instagram, Mrs. Hinch or something like that. But essentially what we're doing is um, in the in the process of using the people's techniques, of clearing some of the clutter, we then generate cash as a, a result of that. And that cash can be used for your livelihood, but it can also be used to help set up things like Carla said, I agree. Um, so what's some, what can we start with in terms of general that, you know, and again, with these lists, you may be aware of it, or you may not have any idea about it. So we just, we don't want to discriminate against what we think you may or may not know. Yeah. So um, depending on which country you are in, there's going to be classified ads, a classified listing. So in the UK, we have a, a website called Gumtree. Uh, there's also Sp Spock. Yep, yep. But I think Gumtree is the biggest one here in the UK. Uh, in America, it's going to be Craigslist. So these are the most direct um, classified ads that you take a photo of your item and you put a price on it and a description and you stick it up there. It's a bit hit and miss because um, one, a lot of it's done face to face. So people will come and pick up the item and give you the cash. Not really working anymore because of the lockdown, obviously. Um, but also it depends on people happening to see your item and needing something like that at, at the moment. The good thing about those classified ad sites is you generally get, to, well, you do, you get to keep 100% of the sale a mm. month that you can pay for a paid listing, etc. But still, you're taking um, the full amount. So they're a good place to start. 
very general, very wide, but it might work for your items. Yeah, what worked for me really well is Facebook Marketplace. Um, so when I moved house uh, in February, so watching this now we're in March, I moved in February and we sold the, what, what month are we in? April, we're April. Mid, we're midway through. Yeah. We're midway, what am I saying? Okay, so uh, we're, so when we moved house in February, which is quite a quick move, we had the new flat that we moved into had a fridge, washing machine, et cetera. So we literally sold the fridge and the washing machine via Facebook Marketplace. I can promise you within literally a couple of hours of it being listed on Facebook Marketplace, the items were sold. Um, and they were sold for a good price as well. So they were secondhand, so they were priced accordingly, but they were sold very quick. If I was to give you one tip with that, I would say, number one, have the picture of the actual item. Um, that works well, of course, but also have the picture and the price images of the original item. So I bought mine off uh, appliancesonline.com and those items are still on the website. We've got loads of reviews. Um, the price is what it is on the website. You know, assume, okay, the washing machine was 500 pound. I was selling it for 300, but I took the images of the, of the main site. So they got these professional looking images with the reviews, make sure they were captured, how much is officially worth in the shops. And then my own picture. So they've got something to compare this to. Is this a washing machine from 20 years ago? Well, no, actually they're still selling this washing machine online and it's worth um, you know, 500 quid and I'm getting it for a bugging because I'm, I'm picking it up for 250, 300. Mm -hmm. So that tactic I've used for years and it seems to work quite well. Yeah. If you are looking for um, a wider reach and then you're going to post it to people rather than them coming to you, um, which is going to be a bit easier to do nowadays because again, we're in lockdown, um, Amazon Marketplace and eBay work very well. Um, yeah. Higher chance of selling, but they're going to take a percentage. Um, yeah. and again, it's going to depend on the items, like something like a fridge that Harmindo was selling. The person's going to have to come and look at it and take it away with them. You, yeah. you, that's not the kind of thing you want to end up <laughs> like looking down to your post office and shipping. I don't think you could even ship a fridge from the post office, but <laughs> it depend on your items. If it's clothing, jewelry, etc., then eBay and uh, Amazon Marketplace and Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook classifieds are all going to work. Facebook Market, yeah. Facebook Marketplace, um, yeah. very, very good place. I, what what my beef with is, so recently I tried to sell some stuff on eBay. My beef with eBay is they, they've given you less power in the copy, uh, the way you can describe your item, uh, which is why I prefer Facebook Marketplace at the moment because I can write my attractive sales copy and talk about my product, whereas eBay now has a system for most products that, have a category where it's also almost like select this, select this, select this, and they will, yeah. yeah and they've taken away that power to write a persuasive copy around the product. Uh, and not, I'm not saying um, fabricating the truth. I'm just saying actually catch somebody's attention. I mean, we're talking about thousands of items online. So catch somebody's attention. They, so, they seem to have taken that power away from us, um, unless you have to pay for it. I'm not sure. Um, and Generally, there's nothing stopping you from posting your um, items on multiple sites. It's just going to take more time on your mm. side than yeah. you'd be able to get the price, best price for it. So they're the general sites. Um, you probably know yeah. these already. Amazon Marketplace, Gumtree, Craigslist, uh, another one called Preloved in the UK, Facebook Marketplace, all of these different places you can use to sell items in your home in order to generate cash right now. Um, yeah. What I wanted to talk about more specifically, though, are specific niche sites um, where you can for a particular product category a lot of these specific sites they will have an app on the telephone where you can just um, I'll use Zifit for example as a mm -hmm. uh, uh, as a model here so Zifit Z-I-F-F-I-T has an app on your telephone where you can scan the barcodes on each of your books um, I think they do DVDs and they do video games as well, but they're mainly books. You can scan them all, beep, 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 and it tells you immediately on the screen how much it's worth. And then you take all those books that you've scanned and you've agreed you want to sell them, stick them in a box, and they will pick up the box from you for free. So they just make it so much faster. Mm. Obviously, you could list all of those books on Amazon. You could list all of those books on eBay and sell them one by one by one, but you don't want to be packaging each book up and sending it off 
um, just to make a few quid each time. With so, so it depends on convenience. Um, so that's, again, I, I would agree partially because it depends on how much time you have, what your scenario is. Is that additional four True. quid you might make by selling it individually worth it? Uh, whereas I'm I'm more like you, Carl, where I would say, look, and I've done this in the past, put this all in the box and just get rid of it. So you can sell it for me and give me a smaller percentage. So, yeah, obviously, zip it, take a cut. So you're getting a lower price. If you sold that book directly on eBay, maybe you can sell it for five pounds. Whereas if you scan it on zip it, maybe they're offering you two pounds. So you make less, but the convenience of just throwing it all in a box and then picking it up is just massive. So if you do have a large... Um, I mean, I do this every year or so. I I have my bookcases so that once they're read, I put my books at the top. Um, so the top one or two um, shelves of the bookcase are basically, okay, these are done. So each year I can just take them all down, scan them, see if they're worth anything, um, send them off to Ziffit or go and donate them to a charge shop. And that's mm. kind of something mm. I do on a regular basis. Um, the last time I did it with Ziffit, I think I made about 260 pounds, which is not nice. bad for that's not bad yeah yeah yeah. because otherwise they're just going to sit on a shelf um yeah correct like literally gathering dust is the definition of it um and what's interesting about books is they have they've really held their value um some, it depends um some it depends of, which book yeah some, if you scan it's like 20p well, yeah yeah not worth it um yeah whereas others you scan them and they'll be like three four pounds mm. and I, I guess it's just supply and demand whatever yeah people to sell them for on amazon which i assume is yeah. what they're doing um, so zip it great for books dvds dvds aren't worth much anymore by the way though but you can Pennies. Sell, yeah you can sell them yeah. so a few years ago the police reported that um the th like thefts of dvds when people break into a house they no longer steal dvds dvds are not worth enough <laughs> They are penny. <laughs> they just yeah. don't pick them. So, um, but video games you can sell, um, and they yeah. get a decent price. Um, so that's book. I would say with video games, I would say try to sell them ASAP. The video game industry is changing subscription models. Um, they give you give away free games every single month. So I would say if you've got video games that you just that are sitting on your, I mean these are secondhand. They're worth very little, but right now they'd be worth more worth in six months time um yep. the model's changing and i think i can't remember when the next generation of consoles will come out but i'm sure that's going to have a subscription it's uh, still attached to it so mm. the new playstation is december and the same with the xbox um, and yeah it's moving into the netflix model rather than physical discs so yeah unless you're keeping them for memento value or whatever they're probably worth selling sooner rather than later um for games you can also look at music magpie and mm -hmm. um in the uk at least sex so cex <laughs> yeah exchange. computer exchange yeah yeah yeah. computer exchange oh, sex um cex dot com or dot shop or whatever nice. now what about if people have got clothing so we've done uh, so there's two other other main categories electronics and clothing um, so what else we've got things like especially um old telephones a lot of people have uh old model iphones and samsung i have this at home yeah 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 just just and they're never going to be used for anything um maybe you have an old ipad whatever it is um there's a few there's buyback boss there's orchard there's gazelle there's swapper um i think orchard is canada buyback boss is usa in the uk is it swapper i've got them all in the list i've, I've put which country it is yeah and again we've not used all of these but we've done this research for you so you've got categories because you could have no books but you could have like Actually, I've got a drawer full of old phones. Um, so now you know about Buyback Boss, uh, Gazelle Swapper. Have a look. Have a look at, and research it. Yeah. You find the one for your country. Um, plus, if there's multiple ones in your country, you just check them all and see which gives you the mm. best price. Simple. Yeah. So there's no point us giving you an exhaustive list. For most of these, you can type in into Google, you know, buy old phone or. Yeah. Sell my back. old buy yeah, buy electronics. Phone. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then clothing was the one you asked about. Yeah, so clothing, yeah. Clothing, clothing is a massive one. Um, I don't know why. I, I had, until a few days ago, I did not know this was such a large market. Clothing, especially things like um, uh, used wedding dresses, massive market. I did not, mm. did not realize. Um, so in the UK, it's Vinted, V-I-N-T-E-D. And in the USA, it's uh, Trade C. 
to trade S Y. Trades, yeah, 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 I've heard of that. Yeah, I mean, it, because me and you don't care about clothes, it, we just we just don't even 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 explore that area of the market. But there we go. So we've got two. Um, what I do know is vintage clothes. Uh, if you've got a certain brand or logo, they seem to certain ones seem to be worth more or certainly hold their value uh, later down the line. I mean, they've got vintage okay. shops all one over the place. I saw. So is it vintage? On one of them they had on, yeah, it's Louis Vuitton handbags and stuff like that. People were um, basically still selling them for a few thousand dollars. Mm. Uh, yeah, on vintage. So vintage is definitely secondhand. Um, but yeah, go and have a look. And um, I think it's, you have to be creative. This is why it might be worth looking at something like Marie Kondo. Um, so that's the, God, what's that book called? It's, it's got the cutest title. The um, Getting clear in your house kind of yes, thing. Sparks of Joy. Um, I've totally forgotten the name of her book. Oh, The, life, it. the life Changing Magic of Tidying. So she's... Ah, she, that's a good she, name. She has a Netflix series as well, I believe. I yes. Episode. She's the one where she has you pick up all your items and ask yourself, does this bring me joy? Like, is this an item that... You know, I see every day and it's like, this is great. For the majority of us, 80, 90% of the stuff in our houses, it, no, it's just clutter. No, it's just accumulation over time, yeah. Yep. So to be able to take all of that stuff, um, to unburden yourself physically by getting rid of it and generate cash at the same time, it's, it's mm. a pretty sweet deal. And it's good. It's like spring cleaning. You're cleaning yeah. your house. You're making your house a tidier, a nicer environment to be in because it's not full of stuff. Um, and you're making a bit of cash. So win-win mm. very simple um basic idea that a lot of people don't remember they can do um so you might be sitting at home like oh, i've got no money i've got no money but then you look around yourself and there are there's hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of stuff you're not using um and somebody else could be using that and enjoying that um instead of it sitting in your cupboard yeah absolutely because even when i i debated whether or not to sell my fridge and, and actually take it to a storage place i've got in london um uh, the, sorry the washer dryer the fridge was going to go because um, that wasn't worth a lot an emotional attachment to your washer dryer <laughs> no it's just it's, it's just this human instinct where okay but what about the next place the next place may have a washer dryer so it's that kind of thing and i was just like well no because it's then, then this washing machine is following me around my life um just just there in the background back of my mind so i'd rather just get rid of it um and it is a certainly different feeling uh, so that's number one. Okay, number one as a category is selling something that you already own um, for cash. Yep. Uh, and there's a few different methods or different places for one is general and then number two is categories. So now number two, uh, the next category is is rather than selling an item, um, we are now exchanging ourselves for time. Uh, the category, think of it as human input. That makes it sound um, like prostitution. We're, <laughs> we're talking about selling. I know. Sell, selling Not yourself selling is, is tainted by this industry and the way people think. Um, yeah. But essentially what we're doing is we're, we are selling our self um, but not skill set wise, um, mm -hmm. not we're not time focusing on skills here. Mainly, we're um, selling time and attention. Yeah, not our physical self. So there's a whole um, uh, category of websites, mm -hmm. and they're called GPT or Get Paid To, um, and they this wide GPT uh, umbrella is used because it can be get paid to do so many different things. It could be mm. watching a video online. It could be um, clicking on some links. It could be uh, filling out a survey. It could be focus groups. It could be downloading a game on your Android phone, playing it for 10 minutes, getting to level two, and then uninstalling it. Like It could, it could be so many different things. Um, yeah. Basically, businesses out there require these tasks done, and they need to be done by actual human beings uh, rather than by computers. Um, so there are these GPT sites, get paid to sites, which basically farm out these tasks to hundreds and thousands or millions of people. Um, so if a business mm -hmm. needs, you know, a hundred thousand survey responses, they will get one of these GPT sites to send it out to a mass amount of people. And each person who completes the survey, for instance, will get paid 50 cents. Um, yeah. So. So, so this is very good for people who have some time. If you've got time on your hands, um, this is a nice place to like explore. So yes, if you've got time on your hands, but also 
a lot of these things can be done while you're watching Netflix or you're doing something mm. else or you're, um, you know, on the cycling machine doing exercise or whatever it is. A yeah, lot yeah. of these are extremely low attention requirement um, as a result of this because anyone can do them because um, cause they don't require much skill or attention or even time. Um, each of these tasks will be extremely low paid. We're talking about uh, it could be five cents, it could be 10 cents, it could be 20 cents, mm, it could yeah. be a dollar or two. Um, it depends yeah. on the tasks, a huge range. But um, the name of the game here is volume. If you're going to complete surveys, you need to complete 100 surveys um, to make your $100 or whatever it is. So yeah, um, they, there are a lot of websites that provide these um, these tasks. And they, there's a huge range of different things and a huge range of how much is paid. Obviously, the ones that pay well are going to be snapped up a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted yeah. to highlight a few of them. I'm sorry, go on. Yes, I was going to. Yes, I was going to just uh, get these. If you if you listen to us and you've got a notepad, uh, these are the different areas. Number one is survey surveys. So actually doing surveys. Number two is testing. Uh, number three is. Um, researching and focus groups are just slightly different to uh, surveys and then finally is reviews so yep. these the things we're going to talk about now fall into these four categories there yep. um, so the first one is surveys right yes yeah, surveys and when I'm saying surveys it's like one or two questions that you have to click on um, it's, it's a very short survey yep. very different to something like focus groups which actually requires you to generally jump on a live video but we'll get to that in a moment so surveys extremely quick um, very low rewards, but you can do a lot of them. There's also a lot of different websites. The big ones, though, are Survey Junkie and Swagbucks. They are the kind of um, the major players in in this area. But there's also, gosh, there's a big list here. So if you've got a pen and paper, great. Otherwise, go to the Excel. John, go to the Excel. Check it on Excel. Just just understand that there's. Let me throw some names out because people okay. might might know them. So user yeah. interviews, inbox dollars, Toluna, life points, inbox pounds, one poll, branded surveys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like there's a whole load here. Um, yeah. And there's even more in the GPT section of the Google Sheet. Um, yeah. I would advise you just go and check out see which ones are available to you a lot of them are restricted depending on your country or the language you speak um, so some will only take people in the US some will only take people in Europe um, and some will have different language requirements etc etc so you just need to go and see what's available but the big ones start with survey junkie and swag bucks yeah one warning though um, a lot of them we did allude to this earlier a lot of them do not pay cash but will pay you in points and the points can be redeemed for vouchers, uh, telephone credit, uh, Amazon gift cards, etc., etc. If you are happy to be paid in those kind of currencies, fine, absolutely fine. These are good ways to reduce your costs. But I would say look for ones that pay out in PayPal, um, ones yeah. that pay actual cash. That's just, it's a lot easier to use, obviously, because it's yeah. money. And, and that's the purpose of today's show, which is how do we generate cash? You know, because that's yeah. that's the purpose. We're in lockdown, we're in isolation. You may be going through a tricky time. You may have more time on your hands and need a bit of extra cash. Whatever it is, you may be dipping into your savings and you want to keep that replenished. So the cash is the game. Cash is the name at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so they're fine. Um, very, low, very low pay, high volume. You can do it while you're mm -hmm. watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. Check them out. They're fine. And, and if you think about uh, how much you're looking at anything from... 0.5 dollars to five dollars maybe slightly higher than that but that's typically maybe. that's top end top end that's what that's what they're going to pay for a survey online yeah. like it's just it's just a it's just a process you go through um oh but so these surveys take like 30 seconds a minute so mm. you just do lots of them yeah. um so the next category in gpt is something called testing um i'm using testing quite widely widely here it tends to be tech testing so if i am a company who has a website or i have an app i need to make sure that the user flow the user experience um, for my website or my application works so for that i need to get testers i need people to use the website i need them to try um, make and break it yeah, I need them to sign up for uh, user accounts and see if that works, see if they receive the emails, etc. So it's tech testing. Um, there is, there's a few ways it's done. The most popular is basically you have a, an application on your computer 
and it will record your screen and it will record your webcam while you talk through the process of using the website. So you'll be moving your mouse around kind of like, uh, so I need to log in. I don't really know where the login button is. And you just talk through your yeah. thought process. And oh, for I the don't like these colors. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so for the people developing that product, that's really useful feedback. They get that live, yeah. uh, so they get that video feedback. So because this requires a bit more skill, a bit more time, um, you tend to get paid a bit more. So there's one called user testing. They pay about $10 um, for each 20 minute test. So in an hour, you could do three tests, obviously, and that's $30 an hour, mm. which is fine. I mean, that's more than minimum wage. What's that in pounds, 20 quid? Um, yeah, 20 quid. Um, the I guess the downside of this is there's not going to be as much available as a survey side of things. Um, but if you are looking for this on a constant basis, you'll definitely grab a few of these opportunities and make a bit of extra cash. Um, so that's testing. Uh, number two is uh, focusing on a focus group, uh, a research group. And Carl, when I did this, I've done focus groups back in the day. You know, they'll pay you 50 quid. You go to oh, a hotel. Live, ones, where you go live ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go to a hotel. Uh, and I was just curious. And I, I, I could, I, back then I could do with an extra 50 quid. So I went, yeah. went along. You sit in a room. They, they invite you in. You fill out a survey. You, you Maybe you use something or try a, uh, like a, a product that they have. And then they'll just give you a check for 50 quid. And that was it. You was on your way. And there's normally somewhere in London or whatever. Yeah. And that was the old way to do it. But how have they adapted now? it's lockdown what's how has that evolved because that's quite expensive for them because they're hiring rooms as well yeah i think even before the lockdown most of this has moved online mm. um so if it's a physical product you sign up they will send you the product you will play around with it so sometimes you get to keep the product so that's maybe a nice bonus depends bonus. what it is yeah <laughs> entirely <laughs> um so what they generally do though is they do same thing focus groups they get a bunch of people in on a live call so it'd be a zoom call or whatever it is um where again you're using your camera um, and you are talking about the product, whether it's uh, a digital product that they ask you to use or whether it's a physical product, but you give them your time, you talk about the product with them and it's a live session. So the testing would be just recording your screen and you talking to a camera, whereas uh, focus groups tend to be, not always, but they will tend to be a live session. So it'd be a yeah. core where you're talking to them. Yeah, so there'd be some, somebody else on the other, li other side who's asking you questions, yep. uh, quizzing you about your experience and your product, uh, how you use the product or service that you've been using or what your expectations is. And focus and research groups are, in terms of a a R and D experiment, old school. So they are they're wet, they're embedded in there. So they they again they're very similar to the user interface testing, where they're not that readily available. But when you do see one, just click log in, register. Um, where can people find these? Um, so again, on the list, there's a few different companies that do it. Um, the ones that I've highlighted here are Respondent and valid validately <laughs> validately validately it looks fine when it's written down when you say it, it's stupid though but they yeah. pay about um a hundred dollars per live session you do mm. live mm. sessions about an hour so a hundred dollars yeah. an hour again fantastic if you could do eight of them in a day and you could do them a week <laughs> right. that's that's not available it, you'd be able to pick up a couple of months but still if it's a hundred dollars for an hour of your time Sure. Yeah, yeah, and they're more specific on who they want. So they they almost have their customer um, avatar in place, and they're saying we're going to give this to this custom avatar to you know experience this product and give us feedback. So they're more specific. Yeah, and that might be you. It might not be you. That's not a personal thing. It's just depending on where the product is going to be sold later. Hmm. If, if it's an American market, they obviously are going to want American um, user uh, yeah. sort of focus group tests. And, and what's the last one we got on the list for human? interaction or human exchange for attention sure so um another one this is similar to surveying but a bit different um you can do reviewing um so it can be online reviews um there's one called slice the pie never heard of that was, one yeah it was set up initially for music reviews so you would go on you'd review music tracks kind of cool they have expanded that so now it is products um there are other ones i haven't written any here so I'm we just quickly pull them up in my mega list. Uh, here we go. So what's the big one? Is it tester chop? Yeah, uh, five star ohms and nice rebate. These are fascinating ones. So five mm -hmm. star dash OMS and yep. nice rebate. 
These ones are mainly about Amazon reviews and what they do is they get requests from companies who are selling things on Amazon who want um, honest reviews of their products. Uh, yeah, because you're not allowed to pay to incentivize five-star reviews. But Correct. what these manufacturers do is they um, they will basically send you the product. No, no, sorry. You buy the product on Amazon using your money. Um, the product sent to you, you review it, you feedback to um, nice rebate or five-star ohms. And then these review companies will re refund you. So you get the money or, or, or rebate you. So this did that, um, that's so name they, makes sense. So okay, they that, rebate you, they, yeah, yeah, they give you the cash back. So let's say you spend 50 quid. Um, you tested out this 50 quid, uh, object. It means you're a verified purchaser on Amazon, which is important. You review it on Amazon and then you go back to, uh, five star ohms or rebate, whatever it's called, whatever. Yeah. Um, and you say, okay, I, I've done the review and, um, here's my receipt of the, the product they will give you the money back plus a bit extra for doing the review. Mm, like, that's fantastic. Like 10 or so. so this is a really good way of getting free stuff. If you want yeah, free stuff, yeah, you don't yeah, need yeah. to send that back. You get the free thing and you get about 10 quid on the side um, yeah. for doing the review. So it's an interesting one to look at. Um, you might end up with even more weird crap in your house, yeah. which you can which then, you sell, can on then sell on. Which you can then sell on. Fantastic. What a technique. Good. <laughs> uh, we could have done the whole podcast on that. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic so that that was the f that was focused on the human exchange um but it requires very low attention to all the way up to actually you need to put a bit of effort into it but again yeah, it doesn't require groups. any skill yeah Take focus it. groups the reviewing process there's a bit of effort involved there um but wouldn't it be nice for the money just to, to land on your lap okay so number three is uh task based um yeah. so again you don't need a lot of skill but yeah. slightly different. So this is this is a task based process where now we are exchanging. Um, we're, we're fulfilling a specific task that somebody is requiring and they will then give you cash in return for that. So it is becoming a bit more skill based. So we tend to get paid a bit more for these. Um, okay, good, good. So there are things like uh, micro task engines. Um, so micro task might be something like um, Data entry. Yeah, d data entry or um, uh, spelling corrections or listening to an audio clip and identifying certain words that are used in it or something that's very quick can be done in a few seconds and it's done in massive high volume. Um, mm. So it's worthwhile for the company to farm it out. Uh, it might be things like completing captures, you know, the um, things where it says find the... Yeah, yeah, yeah the street light or something like that lots of ai companies want humans to fill out those kind of quizzes because that helps them to train their artificial intelligence algorithm um so they'll show you lots of pictures and say which one of these is a woman and you mm. have to press the ones that are women and all of yeah. that goes back to them uh to help train ai so there's a lot of that kind of stuff too yeah for you and your side it means you sit at a computer um and you answer lots of very short questions, lots of very short queries. And for each one, you get paid a, a small amount. A bit different to surveys because, well, not that different. Um, <laughs> generally, the micro tasks, though, tend to be specifically for uh, businesses who are trying to outsource a business yeah, process. Yeah, and, and the work is slightly different because, you know, the survey is that you're responding to a set, set of questions, um, whereas the task is, you know, you're completing a task for a business function, like you said. So, so the output is slightly different. The input probably requires the same amount of effort and time, um, but microtasking is quite cool. Um, yeah, I like the sound of that. So, the big player here is Amazon, and um, in particular, Amazon have a division called Mechanical Turk or M Turk. Um, you can look it up. You can sign up. Relatively difficult to get verified. Um, most of the most of the people who work for them, they want them to be in the US, Canada, or um, Europe. Uh, so if you are in those country, um, in those locations, that's fantastic. Um, so Mechanical Turk is the big one, Amazon's Mechanical mm -hmm, Turk. Mm -hmm. There's another one called Click Worker, which is a bit more open uh, globally. Uh, just, I don't know. Just working by clicking. Yeah, I, get, I like that. Yeah. 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 So they're the big two, Mechanical Turk, Turk and Click Worker. The pay for the tasks is going to very wildly um mechanical turk 
I thought of another one. They have things like translation tasks. Um, so yeah. if you speak multiple languages, it might be rapid translation of individual words or sentences or whatever it is. Um, so something like that, which requires specific skills, will actually pay mm. um, a decent amount. Whereas something that just requires you to have eyes and clicking on certain pictures yeah. will not pay very much. Um, but they have kind of job boards which tell you how much you get paid for each task you do um, and how many tasks are available so you can kind of gauge oh, how much you can make from it. Yeah, fantastic. And then then what's what's other ways, what other task-based uh, transactions can we, we can access online? Sure. So we're moving into um, even higher reward and a bit more skill-based. There are, there are companies that require, um, it's like search engine review and social media review search engine work basically auditing or evaluation so let's say i run sainsbury's and i want to make sure that i show up in a google search result for uh buy food chelmsford whatever it is mm. it's a total example um they want to know when somebody types in buy food in chelmsford what kind of things are they seeing on their screen what kind of things are they clicking on um how is the search engine so google displaying this data to people around the world. Um, this is very valuable information for them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they don't necessarily want to send somebody to Chelmsford to do that search query. Um, yeah. They want to source it out. So there are um, there are agencies, um, and a few of them are Appen, so A-P-P-E-N, and Lion Bridge. And there's another one which is really big called uh, Leap Force. Yep. So, um, these their agencies you need to apply um some of them i think leap force in particular actually have an entrance exam so you need to study and learn how to uh, formulate the reports that they send yeah. back to their clients um because it's in a very certain way so they're much harder to get into however once you do um they are apparently um, i haven't used any of these but from the research i've been doing they are apparently very consistent so you will continue to get hours of work. A okay. lot of the uh, tasks we're talking about are a bit ad hoc. Um, so yes, one month you might make a few hundred dollars, but then the next month there's nothing for yeah. every week. With yeah. App, LineBridge, and LeapForce, you tend to get a consistent amount of work if you want it. You can get a few hours a day um, if, you, if that's what you want. Um, in terms of the pay, it's about minimum wage. Uh, so roughly about ten dollars, twelve dollars, ten dollars an hour. Yeah, um, it depends. Apparently, it depends on the skill level. And as you, um, if you're with them for longer, you can kind of progress. Um, and some of their jobs are, I saw some were twenty-two dollars an hour, for example, uh, which is fine because again, yeah. this is kind of stuff that you're doing at home. It's still not massive. Um, not massive time or skill requirement. Yeah, and, and if you think about it, you're even you know you're basically using these websites anyway from your geographic location, as based on what Carl's example was there. So it's about going that extra mile and auditing it in order to provide a better end product for other users in the world. Um, so essentially, that's that that's my understanding of this. So search engine work or well, auditing. Uh, yeah, it's kind of what do we call it? Search engine testing or yeah. Uh, yeah social media evaluation is the other one so if you have an instagram account for example certain uh, companies will want you to use your instagram account to access their content they want to see how you see it um, yeah. they want to see what your experience is with it etc so search engine evaluation so search engine testing and social media evaluation or testing yeah so um, go, go type those into google and go explore what those mean um, and yeah, who knows? You could be making ten, twenty dollars an hour um, from that as an additional work and additional income stream. So I like that a lot. Now, one that we we've included probably more useful for after lockdown is physical tasks. Um, so this is an interesting one because yes, these are going to be more useful after lockdown. But for some people, uh, for some one, specific things, yeah, when we get the antibody or the antigen test, and we know that some people are now immune. Um, plus not carrying, these are going to be very relevant. Um, mm. There will be things like, uh, well, okay. So these are uh, physical tasks where people are needed out in the world to go and do something. It could yeah. be, can you go and collect my shopping for me. It could be, I need somebody to come and fix my leaky tap. Uh, um, somebody to come uh, hoover my carpet, clean, yeah, 
yep. do a, do a round of cleaning around the house. Um, yep. No, really, they're, they're, they're mi not micro tasks. They're tasks, but in the physical world, very small ones. It's odd jobs, really. Yeah, but there odd are jobs. Are to describe it. To make it easy to find them now. Um, yeah. So the big ones are Task Rabbit. Yeah. And Shepper, S H E P P E R. Shepper, got it. Um, so as as we said, a lot of these are not going to be relevant during the lockdown because there isn't physical movement, but. In the next few months, as that starts to release, there will be certain people who cannot go out still, um, who might need additional support. So this is a way. Uh, this maybe this is a useful way to help provide that while getting paid at the same time. Yeah, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I agree. And um, I, th I feel like there's going to be a strong demand for it because uh, how do we get? How does somebody say if I needed a service doing? Uh, physically delivering food, whatever it is, how do I find somebody trusted, somebody who's been vetted, somebody who I don't have to hand physical cash over to, because that's also a big challenge it's in this new economy. It allows somebody else to pay them and, and handle that for their service, and I can independently review their service as well. So things like TaskRabbit and other similar companies are going to be, I personally feel, in demand. Um, fix it. Yeah, right now, no. Get yeah. Them up to Potentially, a lot. Potentially, well, yeah. I mean, delivery right now is massive. Like the only people massive. hiring are delivery companies. Uh, I think and Amazon hired uh, hundred thousand, yeah, and they're looking to add another seven thousand five hundred to their yeah. workforce. So um, delivery is one thing you can do on TaskRabbit, and obviously in massive demand. But there are other things as well. Um, absolutely. So, so that's physical tasks. So we just just briefly want to talk about it. And the final one is mystery. Shopping again. Yeah, this is our, where to put this. This is a really weird one. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's for after lockdown as well. Um, I don't know if there's online mystery shopping, but I think that's been dealt with in the categories above that we spoke about. Yep. Um, yeah. um, but these are just uh, this is a nice way to earn a little bit of extra cash while going around your normal, hmm. your normal, normal day to day life. Um, basically, there are again these are a bit like the website testing, but physical shops um so there'll be small jobs like you'll be paid a pound to go and buy a crunchy from the local spa yeah. for example and you need to take a photo of the crunchy so crunchy is a chocolate bar in the uk um like on its stand you, and then you maybe take a photo of the crunchy's receipt or whatever like yeah and then that's all you need to do that counts as mystery shopping maybe you need to give some feedback on the service you um you received when buying your country it depends there's going to be different jobs but you'll make yeah. a small amount of money for doing that kind of thing yeah yeah and and, and i think that'd be quite fun you know if, if you and your partner are out and about doing something like that you're getting paid for exploring the shops uh completing a process uh, and and literally mystery sh mystery shopping so it does what it says on the tin um so so i do like that one okay so that's number i have a friend who does it but he does it for travel um and he mystery shops mm. in Eurostar. So he gets to go to Paris for free. So oh. if you, if you can get the right mystery shopping gigs, it works really well. Yeah, yeah. I, I know some people who've had some fantastic uh, gigs out of it, uh, and they get vouchers for uh, big brand names as well. Um, so, but again, it'll be a verifying process. Oh, yeah. So yeah, and there's um. So the things we wanted to talk about specifically were there's now apps for doing this, which mm. again make it really easy. Um, so you can just have a bunch of these on your telephone. You get notifications of things in your area. It's a few extra quid. So, uh, field agent, be my I Y, I I. Be my I I. Yeah. yeah be my I I. Romla and click and walk. Again, they're in the list down below. Um, but that's another way to make a few extra quid. Yeah, great. And that's probably one for after lockdown, uh, unless there's some unique jobs that have appeared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Might be ones where you have to go and make sure people are closed. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, make sure somebody's closed, or are <laughs> are the shopping centres providing like a, a sanitation for the trolleys or whatever? I don't know what they might be asking for. Okay, so uh, that's number three, which is um, all about tasks, like exchanging um, yourself for a task which somebody needs. Typically, it's bit for to provide service for a business function. Um, excluding things like task rabbit where you might be doing a micro task for somebody the odd job yeah. so number four uh, which is the final one on our list in order to make you cash asap is renting out resources um yeah. and, and this is essentially renting out something that you already have that exists for a fee and it could be and it, i think the world of renting economy is going to grow massively in the future um because how much especially in big cities 
think about how often do you use your car? How often do you use your parking space? How often are you using, and Carl will share some cooler ones in a moment, but how often are you actually using an item? Even down to how often do you use your SLR camera, uh, your DSLR camera? How often do you actually use it? Do you just use it on vacation? And is it just sitting on your shelf the rest of the time? Can we monetize our pieces of equipment slash resources to the greatest possible effect um, during the idle time, during the time that's not being used? That's really the focus of this final part. Yep. So as Hans is talking about, this is a massive industry. Uh, mm. A lot of it is locked off at the moment because of the lockdown. So you can do obviously Airbnb is a big one. If you have a spare room, you can rent it out and you yeah. can make like a solid income um, mm. from Airbnb right now. No, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, Although Airbnb apparently in some certain places are are uh, paying the Airbnb hosts in order to keep the listing with them. So some of the listings, they're actually, it's almost uh, like a, a user bailout as such. There's also um, near hospitals. Um, Airbnbs are being kind of contracted in to provide uh, accommodation lodging for NHS staff in this yeah, country. NHS staff, staff, um, and yeah. being paid for by the NHS, I guess. Mm. I, I, yeah. I don't know if it's discounted or whatever it is, but yeah, it's still working, but it's very minimal at the moment. So yeah. there's also a uh, parking space rental. That's justpark.com. Um, you can loan out stuff. So your DSLR is a great example. Um, you're maybe using it a couple of weeks a year. The rest of the time, instead of someone else going out and buying a two, three thousand pound camera, they can borrow yours and they pay. Um, it's like 50. What is it? I, I was looking well, well, it depends because some companies um, actually host. So there's actually companies that actually have their own equipment, which they rent out. So we're just replicating that model. Um, but it's actually quite pricey. You can make a fair yeah, chunk from... It's, it's a good amount of cash. Yeah, um, depending on what the product is. Insured, et cetera. Um, you can loan your car, which is really mm. cool. Um, so you, I don't know how you do it, but it can be unlocked by people who have the app. Um, they yeah. drive around your car while you're not using it. Um, I, I, I should start doing it because I don't use... I live in London and I have a car, so I use it once a month, maybe. And so yeah, could, yeah, 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 certainly. Um, so all of these things are fantastic and that's a big thing in the future um, again it's a bit like if you look around your house and thinking well what stuff what how much of this stuff am I actually using what can I sell mm. um, we can also have that discussion with how much can I rent um, yeah. I only use it you know one week a year yeah yeah so that stuff's great um, there's a lot of different ways to do that what I want to talk about now though are re renting resources in your home which don't require you to leave the house don't require yeah come to your house because which is crazy i didn't know this stuff existed so I, I i'm looking forward to this part so um mainly computational or bandwidth um rental that's what i want to talk about two different things um bandwidth rental is if you have uh broadband which most people do or you have fiber optic um you can rent out your excess bandwidth in the uk this works because we don't tend to have data caps whereas in america not so much because they do have data caps. Mm. The data caps have been removed right now during quarantine. Although I imagine, I imagine the cable providers over there are doing something to block these uh, uh, ways to rent it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we have a few. We have Packet Stream. We have uh, Honey Gain. So these two, they rent it on a per gigabyte basis. It's um, ten cents per gigabyte. So ten gigabytes gets you a dollar. Mm. Um, so not very much, but again, if you're not using that overnight, it's an extra dollar. Um, generally, uh, so I, I looked it up, but generally they'll pull down um, 10 to 15 gigabytes a day. So that's one to $1.5 per day. Doesn't sound like much, but- But it adds they, up, you know? Yeah, that's $30. Yeah. $30, that's, that's, that's part of somebody's weekly shop. That's the, the broadband paid for. Uh, you may that, have a subscription. It's more than most people pay for their broadband. You yeah. can. <laughs> How do you get broadband for free? It could be a TV package, whatever, whatever you, whatever is thirty to forty dollars or pounds to you. I pay uh, eighty pounds for my broadband a month, mm. so it's thirty dollars or forty dollars, whatever it would. You'd be would a profit. Cover. Yeah, mm. I'd cover the cost of my broadband, so it's basically a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, so there's that one. That's so that's Packet Stream and Honey Gain. Um, they are per gigabyte, and then there is Fluid Stack. So they're a bit different. They uh, pay you depending on the speed of your internet. 
Um, so up to 100 megabits per second is $5 a month. If you've got up to, or if you've got 500 megabits per second or more, it's $50 a month. So mm. you can make bank, depends entirely on how fast you're. I would love even 100 megabytes per second. I was about to say, this is only useful if you've got fiber. If you've got fiber, yeah, yeah. Um, but they mainly do their stuff like overnight when you're not using it. So they have a piece of software which sits on your computer and it's making sure that it only pulls down data when you're not using it. Um, mm -hmm. You can have it on your phone, you can have it on multiple devices. Um, this is apparently how you make good, decent money out of it is you have it on multiple net, like you leave one at work, <laughs> which seems a bit cheeky. <laughs> that is that is cheeky, yeah. Um, and we didn't have, tell you that. Yeah, yeah. no say anything about that but there, there are guides online about okay yeah you can, you can have like six devices linked to one account so you can actually make quite a lot of money so i'm just gonna go to my mom and dad's house without them knowing and add it to all their yeah. devices yeah even a laptop at a cafe <laughs> like you could go nuts <laughs> <laughs> anyway so there are ways to make money off bandwidth that you're not using at night or you're just not using most of the bandwidth time. So, so you mentioned computational so is there other ways we can rent out hours whatever we have sure so this is computational so it's about computer power yeah. um there are two companies in particular which i found many one many others out there there's one called cryptex that's spelled with kr at the beginning hard to spell look in the uh, in the sheet, look in the so sheet cryptex. Yeah. cryptex are basically a crypto currency mining um a mining platform they need uh processing power to mine bitcoin you don't need to worry about what any of that means you don't need to know about bitcoin basically you are just renting your computer and you're not going to become a bitcoin millionaire overnight either no, so no, no. i've left bitcoin <laughs> off the list by the way that's another discussion but the, what they require is a computer with a good gpu and that's a graphic processing unit so if you have a, a modern pc with with a really good graphics card it's so generally a gaming pc um mm -hmm then they will pay you to use that graphics card when you're yeah. not using it. If you've got, um, if you've got a PC, which uh, like a, like a freestanding desktop, which is probably over five, 600 quid, then mm -hmm. that's, it, that's it, applicable. It, yeah. Have a graphics card. It might not have a high end one. Mm. It's a high end graphics card. I mean, they they can be a couple of grand sometimes, yeah. but the, if you've got one, a high end graphics card, they pay you about $50 a month. So again, that's not bad. Um, so they will test your computer specifications and then give you an idea of how much you uh, yeah. can get paid. Yeah. You're not using it overnight, so why not? Um, and then the second one I look uh, looked into, which seems um, like a good deal, is Load Team. So L-O-A-D Team. Load Team use your, uh, use your CPU, so not your GPU. They're not using your graphics card. They're using your processor. So you can do this even if you have a laptop. Um, it just needs a... But this is any computer. Yeah. Um, I was not able to find pricing on them, but it looks so pricing payout. It looks like ten to twenty dollars a month or so, depending on how fast your CPU is. Mm -hmm. So again, if you have multiple computers, you could potentially have a few of them running things. You need to make sure the cost of your electricity bill doesn't go up too much, but that should yeah. be a yeah. lot there. But I mean, for people who, for example, like I have my laptop on all day anyway. Um, you know, it's on. It's doing something uh, always. So for, and I'm not using maximum CPU all the time, unless I'm doing some sort of video editing or something. So um, that's a good one. I'll, I'll have a look into that one yeah. as well. So that's fantastic. Um, so office computers, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop saying it. Yeah. It, it, oh, all your mate's computers, your mum's computer. <laughs> What's don't this? Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry don't about, about that. It, it's, it keeps you safe from viruses. Uh, <laughs> you haven't heard any of that from us today. Uh, I don't care what you do. We don't care what you do, but just it didn't come from us. Okay, so um, I love that. So that's four different ways where you don't necessarily need. Let me just summarize those for you. So I've got my our notes here. Number one is selling something really simple, um, a physical item. One is ex providing your human input to provide a function for somebody. That's two. The other, that's number two. Number three is actually exchanging your time to complete a task typically for again a business function number four that was number three number four is actually renting out a resource anything from a camera all the way to renting out your broadband or your cpu or gpu on your laptop or computer whatever whatever you got at home so that's awesome and what i like about this is if you listen to the sort of figures we gave is a realistic income figures but if you start to stack them, say you did one thing from number one, one thing from number two, one thing from number three, and one thing from the final part is number four, 
Now you potentially have got yourself 50 to 150 dollars or pounds, or whatever the currency is in, in your world, um, a month. Now that's a lot. Um, and you know, that's, that's more. I mean, if you are renting out yeah. your, your bandwidth and your CPU, we're talking about 60. Yeah, 50, 60 quid. Yeah. Okay, let's let's stack this. So something so if say we did right, something from number one, uh, which is the lowest, and I've got a notepad here just to tally it out. Well number one is selling, so it depends on what stuff you've got. Okay. I mean. Let's assume you can you manage to sell something for twenty we're gonna use dollars because all of our calculations and these and these sites are typically dollar based. So twenty dollars yeah. yeah, you can sell twenty dollars worth of stuff a month, let's assume, plus something for number two, which is surveys testing reviews so i'd say if you're doing the surveys every day you could probably make another 50 dollars a month total Fifty dollars. Um, if you did pick up a focus group or you manage to get in the testing then suddenly that can jump up um that because if you pick up a focus group that's a hundred dollars a month but okay. let's say you get one every two months so it's another fifty dollars no fifty dollars i like that and then the number three which is micro tasks yep Again, it's going to depend if you manage to get on Appen or Linebridge, um, you can get that consistent work of a, I mean, let's, you could do an hour a day. Yeah. Let's assume 10, 10. Um, so 10, uh, potentially you could, that could be another $300 a month. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's say 150. All right. Let's say 150 to be, uh, yep. And then now we've got number four, which is renting out something, a resource. 50 bucks a month, 50. Depending, depending on how uh, aggressive you are and how many computers or how many internet connections you use. If you did get aggressive with that, you could make a few hundred quite easily. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I love that. So now we're, we're, if you put some effort and explore these things and check out the big list, uh, you're looking at about 300 to $320 um, a month, which is fantastic. Um, that's most of somebody's rent. That's most of somebody's food bill. That's their car finance. And we're talking about an hour a day, really. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, yeah. so, so there's options there. So there's options, and these are low skilled. So, yes, there's going to be a learning curve for some of these items. Yes, there's going to be a setup time. Um, yes, there's going to be a process you have to go through, res vetting or verification, or downloading an app on your phone or whatever it is. But that's fine. Once that's done, there's not much skill required. So what that means is your energy levels. Um, on this is actually very minimal and that's the key so your thought energy can actually be spent on your normal work your family whatever's going on over there where, where watching, little, netflix. watching netflix you know uh, we've completed money heist epic series um and actually focus on that with your full attention but this is something that just happens in the background because it requires a lower thought energy um mm. and and the only thing out there which sticks out which is after lockdown, which will be physical tasks like mystery shopping, task rabbit, etc. But again, you're going to get paid more from that. So you're well clearing this $300. So yeah. it's fantastic. Uh, so what we're going to, so that's today. We've done that. What we're going to be covering tomorrow. So tomorrow is, it's going to be based roughly on the fact that um, we're talking to you in English. So therefore we know you speak English. Hmm. So you have a marketable skill. Lots of people will say, oh, I don't have any skills. Hmm. Uh, you know, I don't have degrees i don't have i can't do nothing yeah yeah so well you're telling me this in english um english is a skill a sort out might, language as well yeah you might not think of it as a skill but it is the language of business it's the language of you know uh, the main uh, communication language uh, globally right now so by having uh, the ability to speak english you have monetizable skills so we're going to be talking around that subject so mm. this will range from uh, being able to teach English. So I found some pretty good sites actually. Um, and te teaching online right now is really kicking off because everyone's locked down. So being able to teach English online kind of fits in with that. Um, found one which pays about $20 an hour. So that's fine. Um, then there's things like writing, freelance writing, whether that is um, blog posts. I found some companies which you submit greeting card like the, the inside of greeting cards and if they use them you get paid and stuff like that there's some very right. cool some, some cool royalty stuff there. yeah yeah um exam scoring so standardized tests some of them need um human input to score them again requires english language uh what else that's it no more examples no more examples yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> oh, okay. narration, 
voiceover, uh, proofreading, editing. There's loads of things. So mm. they're all going to be roughly um, based around this, the fact that you are an English speaker. You can speak English, and that is a skill, a monetizable skill. Yeah. So how can we leverage the skill set of the language that we natively speak, which is English? So that would be the focus of tomorrow. And again, we'll, we'll have a similar structure today where we're just giving you some examples. We'll put it into some sort of format for you so it's easily digestible. We'll tell um, you which ones actually pay quite, quite well and are worth the time. Uh, yeah. In it. And then I think at the end, that was a nice exercise where we kind of pieced together a few different things and we saw roughly uh, what kind of income we can generate. Yeah. So hopefully by the end of the week, you, you know, you maybe got a, a couple of grand coming in from all of these items uh, if you manage to yep. potentially, yeah. If you manage tomorrow, to. Tomorrow will be English and then Thursday will be um, professional skills. So whether you yeah. are, you can do bookkeeping, you're an accountant, uh, a coder business consultant, whatever it is, we will um, show you ways to take those skills online and mm. to sell them. And then Friday will be focused on creative. Yeah. Um, yeah. So illustration, graphic, web design, um, music, whatever your creative skill is, there are ways to, again, uh, generate an income from that. Mm. So we're going to be stacking. Um, so we started with no particular skills required. Then we're moving to, OK, you're an English speaker. That's a skill. Um, and you can make money from that. Then we're going to move into professional skills, um, which again, depending on what you do for work, yeah. and what skills are there, there may be things to do here. And then also creative. Um, maybe there are ways to monetize your creativity. I love that. And we're not we're not saying you don't have any skills today. What we're saying is these are these are ways you just don't need it because you may be utilizing your skills at this time and that energy in a different place. So it's all about how else can we make money with the least amount of energy, the least amount of processing power in our mind uh, and still generate some cash, which is why the, the income is comparative to that level of energy as well. Uh, so the businesses are aware of that when they when they're paying out. Uh, however they decide to do that so fantastic so remember three things i've got to try and remember these as i say them to you number one is subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the bbo show uh every day at 12 o'clock uh, during lockdown certainly we'll be here every day at 12 o'clock for one you guys hour. Which one, which one hour today <laughs> which we definitely didn't do today but i mean this is exciting stuff i mean me and carl have our time now available to share this with you number two is join the slack group um, it's a free group. All it's going to do is ask for your email. Slack, take that email, not us, and then have a conversation with us there. Ask us the questions, especially about this list. And number three, I have no idea what number three is. Check out the list. Check out the list. The list is also in the description below. Uh, have a look at that list. There's 200 items there. You may want to start with the things we mentioned today and start to explore those. Um, it's all there. That's the big list of income generation during lockdown working title so that's it from us we'll see you tomorrow uh, on episode number seven great have a great afternoon everyone bye